Good evening and welcome to the February 14th, 2022 regularly scheduled meeting of the Rockingham County Planning Board, which I now call to order. Chair recognizes Mr. Corey Scott for our invocation. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful to gather in this planning board meeting in Rockingham County. And we're grateful for the community service uh, that this planning board is able to provide. We pray for this meeting at this time that within the laws that we are held to, that we might be able to blend the needs of the individual citizens and the need of the community at large. We pray that this meeting will be peaceful, that we will be respectful of everybody's opinions and views, and that we would be guided by thy spirit to arrive at the decisions that would be the most benefit for this county and the citizens therein. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes, and since they haven't been appeared, uh, uh, prepared, rather, I, I move that we just pass on this item. Second. Move has been made and seconded to pass on approval of the minutes. Uh, since they've not been prepared, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign, there being no opposition. The um, motion is approved. All the adoption of the agenda. Oh, yeah. Uh, the next item is adoption of the agenda. Very quickly before you adopt, um, there was a typo on the uh, agenda page itself, uh, case matters before the planning board B, zoning map amendment is case 2022-02. Mm -hmm. That address should be 265 NC Highway 87, not 65. I move that we adopt the agenda with that correction as noted. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt the agenda with the correction. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, like sign. No opposition, so the agenda is adopted. <clears throat> the following are the guidelines for uh, those of you that wish to speak. Any and all persons who would like to speak must sign the case roster prior to the beginning of the meeting. Additionally, each speaker will be recognized by the board chairman. When recognized, each speaker must appro approach the podium and will be asked to state their name and address uh, for the record before speaking. Unless otherwise specified, all testimony, evidence, and comments will be directed to the board chairperson. Please remember that many of you probably wish to speak on the same matter with the same objection. And if that's the case, uh, please, when you approach the podium, just say that you agree with the previous speaker. And that way we won't have to put time limits on anyone that wants to speak. Each case will be presented to this board by a member of the planning staff. Following the staff presentation, the case applicant will be given the opportunity to brief the board regarding the case. Following the applicant's presentation, those who have signed up to do so will be granted the opportunity to speak against or in support of the proposal. If needed, the board chairperson reserves the right to set time limits. After hearing from the public, the applicant will be given the opportunity for rebuttal. This will be followed by board discussion, motions and voting. At this time, uh, we call on staff to uh, present our first case, zoning map amendment request 2022-01. Oh, we got it right here. Well, I meant because oh, you this the okay. okay. You need the screen down. Thank you, Corey. 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 Thank you, Corey.
Good evening, everyone. Um, as our board chair said, my name is Lynn Cochran, senior planner here with Rockingham County. Uh, forgive me if my voice, if you guys have trouble hearing me, my voice is still okay, catching fine. up from that virus last week. Um, our first case is case 2022-01. This is a request for a zoning map <laughs> amendment to rezone a parcel of land from RA to Light Industrial Conditional District, LICD. Tax pen, you can see here, it's located on NC 770 at 6696, just at the intersection with Ridgecrest Drive. Uh, the township is Mayo, and this is a conditional rezoning. I sat and spoke with the applicants at length about what their goals were and what conditions would be suitable and what they would agree to since this is an industrial request. Um, I will touch on a couple of things in the staff report as I go through the maps. This is the vicinity map. It's essentially located between halfway between Stoneville and Eden along 770. And here's a zoning map. I wanted to give you a bigger picture of what's going on in the area. You'll see the scale is 0 0.5 miles. Uh, there is light industrial zoning a couple of parcels away already, which I believe is an automotive repair shop. And then to the west-southwest, there's a little bit of neighborhood commercial also to the east. This area is located about three, little over three miles, did I say? Yeah, north, northeast of Shiloh Airport. <clears throat> this is just an aerial and water features map, nothing significant that affects this parcel as far as topography or geography. It is located in the G1 land class. Um, G1 land class is essentially low density development, uh, targeting residential uses for the most part, but clustering commercial uses around neighborhood nodes, as we know, according to the new land use plan. Just off to the west of this, there is a neighborhood node at the intersection of NC 770, Eden Road, and then I think on the other side, Eden Road becomes, oh, I forgot what other road it becomes on the other side. But just on the other side, there is a node just off to the west there. A couple of things I did want to point out in the land use plan um, was the history of some uh, light industrial uses being approved over time in the past. Um, specifically, I wanted to read out the compatibility of the zoning action with the comprehensive plan. The plan itself identifies these multiple strategic neighborhood commercial nodes located along primary routes scattered throughout, but mostly rural of the county, rural areas of the county. Um, it's lo located nearby one of these nodes. Generally, uh, the uses that are being proposed with this would be considered by many to be commercial, but according to our ordinance, actually end up being sort of sorted into the industrial lane class versus the commercial lane class, and I'll get to that. <clears throat> Therefore, the request has been for a conditional rezoning. Um, you all have had time to, of course, read the benefits and detriments. Um, we've had probably half a dozen calls or so from folks who are um, expressed concern or disapproval of it. Uh, received one email, and I'd say we've had just as many that were just simply inquiry calls wanting to get more information about what the request was about. Could you uh, elaborate on the nature of the uh, objections? Uh, so far, the only specific objections that I've heard, I was out last week again, I apologize, so I didn't get to hear any calls last week. But this, I had heard, were concerns about um, sort of the typical concerns we hear with something like this, tra potential for increased traffic and safety issues, um, potential for impacts on the character of the area being an industrial parcel. Um, that's the only two specifics that ring out in my head right now. I do believe several people have signed up and will be able to express what their concerns are. Um, if, if I may real quick. Sure. <clears throat> um, Last week we got, I had two phone calls. One did express the same safety concerns. Another one expressed environmental concerns oh. for the type of uh, development with the automotive nature, the oil, grease, things like that. And they're concerned about runoff 
and uh, other potential effects to the wells and water sources in the area. Um, one of Lynn's maps pointed out that the water features, there are some in the general vicinity, but none directly across the parcel. Yep. And, and on that point, I'll just go ahead, and, because we did get that call, I remember um, us discussing that call. Our ordinance doesn't really have any rules in place specifically to manage that sort of waste disposal and that sort of thing. That falls under multiple other different umbrellas from folks that we work closely with. Our code enforcement officers in solid waste, our code enforcement officers in other types of waste, and if there is an issue or a concern of groundwater contamination or ground contamination, soil contamination, that would bring in NCDEQ. So I just wanted to point that out, even though those are certainly valid concerns. Our ordinance, as far as zoning approval, does not deal with those topics specifically. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, another question I have, uh, looking at the, uh, the zoning map, uh, I think, yeah, that's the one right there. The light industrial property located just to the right of the crosshatch property mm -hmm. in the question, uh, did you say that was an auto body business? I'm 95% sure it's an auto, automotive body. Indie. Is it still active? I yes. mean, it's, it's an ongoing concern. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's active. Uh, the signage at the road is a well kept property. We drove by when we placed the signs to look at it. Um, so it is in operation. I'll also make a note about, since we were talking about topography, that this property itself, at some point in the past, sometime around the mid 70s, according to tax records, some sort of structure was erected. This was prior to zoning law in the county. It looks to be commercial or automotive in nature. It's hard to say for sure. Some of those who've lived here for a while might know. Um, but that structure is still there and is proposed to be used as part of the site plan. Either at that time or sometime thereafter, a berm was pushed up along the entire perimeter along NC-770 that is now covered with mature vegetation. So there's a dense soil berm and vegetative screen already in place along the primary road. Is it such that it's not visible from the street? It's highly screened. I would say this time of year you could see some things because the trees are partially defoliated, but when in leaf, it's a dense screen. I would agree. Um, so after talking about this with these folks quite a bit, within the you know, scope of our ordinance and with the scope of what our recommendations can and can't be. We are recommending approval, but we're recommending approval of a very, very pared down list of uses. Um, this list of eight uses is gleaned from all of the potential uses in the light industrial district. They identified these specifically. I want to make a point about use number six, an automobile salvage yard. This will exclude parts, picking, sales, and exchange that you would typically think of at an automobile salvage yard. The salvage yard in this case is a towing and service repair, towing of and storage of vehicles, wrecked and non-wrecked, most often which are to be, according to the applicant, most often which are to be then shipped off site within 24 to 72 hours for either sale at a totaled automobile uh, auction, that sort of thing. There won't be salvaging of parts for sale to the public. There will be automobile repair and service that takes place on the parcel, and those parts may be used as part of that. And there will be automobile sales to the public. The applicant does have his dealer's license for dealing and selling, uh, dealing in and sales of automobiles. So he's got those covered. So we narrowed it down to that list of uses from the entire um, selection. We've also asked, staff has recommended um, that we maintain a minimum 50 foot property line bu uh, buffer for all structures, any new structures of any kind. The structure that's out there now I believe it does meet that setback. It's set back fairly far from 770. Um, all lighting standards in Article 5, as pointed out, must be adhered to. These are indirect lighted, shielded lighting. All lighting must be directed away from adjacent property owners, that sort of thing. And 
where there is not already existing vegetation. <coughs> Let's see if I can. These slides don't show it very well on the aerials, but on the western edge, on the northern, the western edge, there's not a lot of vegetation. On the border with 770, there's significant vegetation. And on the back property line of the parcel, there's significant vegetation. Additional vegetation would likely have to be planted along the eastern edge with the adjoining neighbor there. So overall, uh, we feel like enough information has been provided to evaluate the case and from a staff viewpoint, recommend approval with these significant conditional restrictions placed on it. Um, after this evening, the case will go, oh, I'm sorry, there is one last thing I wanted to point out. The applicant did include this site plan, um, 6676. These are representations of trees. Um, she had, uh, she joked with me that she had troubles getting her trees the right size, trying to use a little graphic design program, but um, these are the proposed vegetated buffers that are already there. Where you'll see the gap with no trees on 770, that's the primary ingress egress, which actually already exists. It needs some improvement, but it's already there. And that would bring it into the parking area there in front of what would be the primary body shop. Okay, I just have two more questions, Lynn. Sure. Uh, first of all, assuming that this is approved and then sub subsequently approved by the commissioners, mm -hmm. uh, will the site plan be subject to TRC review? Yes. Okay, and secondly, uh, I noticed that we have two applications here for the same property, one from Bobby Hilton and one from a James Newman. Oh, no, I'll clarify that. Bobby Hilton and James Newman are the current owners of the property. The applicants, Randy and, um, oh, I'm sorry. Bradford. Randy Bradford, yeah, is the applicant. He is proposing to purchase the property from the two owners. He also signed as applicant um, to the conditional uses in agreement. But the, those are the two owner's signatures. We included that in the packet just to confirm that since this is a conditional rezoning, the owners are aware of and have agreed to the conditional request as required by 160D. Okay, so the sales condition on the rezoning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, speaking of uh, rezoning, for those of you in our audience this evening, whatever the planning board decides tonight, whether we approve or disapprove this application, is not the final step. The, the final decision on all rezonings in the county rests with the county commissioners, and they will hear this case on what date, Lynn? March 21st, March 21st. on or about March 21st, given the, as the Board of Commissioners schedule allows, yeah. Okay, so if you disagree with what this board does tonight, you do have recourse uh, to attend the meeting in March um, and uh, discuss your objection with we'll right to the county commissioners. Just wanted to let you know that you still have an avenue left for appeal. Okay, uh, any questions for Mr. Cochran from the board? I have one. Uh, I have two. Uh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, go ahead. Chair recognizes Corey Scott. <clears throat> so I was noticing in the GIS that the, uh, the property <coughs> that's in question here is covered under the Shiloh Fire Department, but the, par the property next door is under Leakesville. Is there a concern about having <clears throat> an automotive facility that far away from the uh, from the fire, uh, where the firehouse is. That is generally something that would come up during the technical review committee uh, process <coughs> versus the rezoning process. It's not, a, it's not a bad question, it's a very good question. And this is one of those areas in the county where you have that distinct border between two fire department areas, um, which we often see. And sometimes that can be a confounding factor. Um, Given that he has his dealer's license, those requirements will all have to apply to as far as safety. And any structures that are being used for anything would have to be inspected and approved by building inspections and by the fire marshal's office also. I can't say that much at least. Okay. But I think the rest of it would likely be dealt with at the um, TRC level. Now, Dan River Water does run down 770. I cannot confirm if hydrants, how many hydrants are in place there, but 
it would not be infeasible to request that a hydrant be placed there since water is there. That would have to do with uh, a discussion with Dan River, but that's more of a TRC kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. The, the, other, the other question is that there's a creek running below mm -hmm. the property. Was there any concern topography-wise of the, of the property in question running, being uphill from where that creek is running along there? Or is there is enough buffer in there, in your opinion, that it's not going to ever, that any kind of concerned discharge or whatever would not get to that? That goes back to that point that I made earlier yeah. in, some port, in some part. We don't have guidelines or teeth, really, in our ordinance to enforce something like that other than our required riparian buffers. Now, this is in the Dan River Eden protected watershed. It's a protected drinking watershed. It's a watershed number four, which is so that sort of the lowest tier of protection that there is. Um, the 30-foot riparian buffer is a county requirement above and beyond. Yeah, they're, they're way, for, way far from that. And they're pretty far above that, too. Um, as far as the utilities themselves go to that point, um, the there are rules, of course, when it comes to well and septic systems. Those are governed by environmental health. Planning and zoning doesn't have anything to do with those. But, of course, we do consult closely with them especially during the TRC process when a project like this is being evaluated. So that if that issue were to come up, they're going to guarantee that all state guidelines are met for the safety of any wells or septic systems and that sort of thing. Um, at the time of application, sometimes it can be expensive to run water lines to your property. Sometimes some folks find it less expensive to drill a well. There was no decision made as to what might happen, and I'm not sure if there's an existing well on the property or not yet, since it was developed so long ago. Um, but given that, um, and given that there are other industrial uses in the area, um, the parts that we can look at and the parts that we can condition as best we have, I think we have. But when it comes to some of these more granular sort of environmental concerns, we end up relying on our partners. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Chair recognizes Cindy Hayworth. Thank you. Um, Lynn, in, your, in the staff notes and analysis, it says this parcel is not located exactly near one of these neighborhood commercial nodes. Mm -hmm. um, when I say exactly, it's not exactly at that intersection where that node is. And I thought this map captured that node, and I apologize, but it doesn't. If you're looking at the map sort of left to right, towards the left, towards the west, you'll see Eden Road and how it curves up shortly out of frame there. It adjoins 770, and that's where there is a commercial node. So it's about half a mile away from one of those commercial nodes. Okay. But it, it speaks of commercial nodes, but this is industrial, light industrial and it says the land use plan does not directly address such a scenario favorably or negatively. Yep. So, but then when you go under to the recommendation, it says as a whole, this zoning amendment does not conflict with the intent. But if the intent is is to put these kind of, of zonings in these nodes, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused on oh, that. Sure. The other thing I wanted to ask is, under the applicant's conditional uses, and you had mentioned in your um, summary that you had talked with the applicant and the salvage car and that type of um, type of thing that might be on this property, that they would be removed within 24 to 72 hours, but that's not one of the conditions. It is not, because we didn't necessarily agree to that tight of a condition at this point because these are uses that he, they know of, that they plan, but the exact length of time for how long a vehicle may sit in any given condition on the lot could vary significantly. This was just a discussion of the typical scenario for what would happen with a towed and stored wrecked vehicle. That's where the question came from. I asked him specifically, okay, so you own a towing operation. When you bring the vehicle to your facility, you know what happens at that point. And he explained to me that usually within a few days, that's what happens. Or it's removed and to be completely disassembled and junked, if not sold. 
if but it's not in every case. If it's not conditioned, it couldn't be enforced. It could sit there. It could well, sit that's, there forever. That, that's because in the in the UDO under conditional uses, there are no time limits. They're not specified, so it'd be strictly a voluntary uh, act on his part whether or not to remove the vehicles in one, two, three, four, or five days. Mm -hmm. Some areas of the UDO in the past and some areas now do include time limitations, but this section of the UDO doesn't. And it can get a little confusing when we're talking about an industrial use versus an institutional versus a commercial versus a residential versus farm. Some of them aren't spelled out clearly in land use plans, nor are they spelled out clearly in UDOs as to exactly what is meant to be exactly where. A land use plan is generally a guide. It's a steering mechanism for the most part. So sometimes it requires interpretation and relation, and that's, we do it a lot, actually, you know. And when it comes to something of this nature, which is, when I think of industrial, I think of heavy, let's say something like heavy industry, asphalt manufacturing or something like that. This has nothing like an impact that industry would have. And if it were just automobile sales, that would actually be just commercial versus industrial. So since it combines some of the things that are allowed only in industrial, it was the sort of, often what you have to do in a UDO and land use plan is find the closest match. If you don't have it spelled out exactly, they teach you this in planning school, as it were, um, that if it's not exactly spelled out in your ordinance, you look for what is your closest match because you can't really say just knee jerk. It's not in our ordinance, so no, you can't do it because um, that's a good way to get in trouble. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does that help? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions for Lynn? Questions. Uh, chair recognizes James Fink. I just wanted to piggyback off what Corey asked about the, yep. the environmental health aspect of it with the wells and the, and the septic tank systems and the potential for um, infiltration of the water, the creeks. It looks like from when I'm looking at the map, it's at best seven, 750 feet to the streams, but that would be covered through environmental health going through TRC, correct? It would, okay. yes. And uh, our local representation, excuse me, local representative for the NC Department of uh, Environmental Quality also sits on our TRC and would be involved in any TRC review of this. And that would be one of the number one things, reasons to take it to TRC because other than that, the scope of this project really isn't large enough to warrant a TRC review except for two things and that's facilities, utilities, and environmental stuff. Um, DOT access might come up. They'll probably need a commercial driveway permit, something like that. It just seems that's like that's just speculation. So we don't know how many vehicles potentially could be stored on this lot. So the potential for runoff, in my opinion, could be it's you know, there. Or it could be substantial. Just it's depends. there now. I get that information from the applicant. All right. Yep. When he, All right. Thank you. Uh, and I was going to make that point myself. Actually, that's something that I that I had discussed with the applicant that he didn't give me a specific number for like an estimate of how many cars per average would be sort of resting on the property. It is not, this. that part is not beyond the board's purview to put a reasonable limitation on the number of, as long as it's rational um, and based in concerns, that is not a condition that is beyond the board to request to be added. Um, a limitation on a certain number of vehicles for whatever good reasons there might be out there to do so. Hmm. Uh, I just had a, a strange thought that, uh, you know, the foot the footprint, while it looks like, say, it may allow for 30, 30 cars, you stack them three high, all of a sudden you got 90. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. that kind of thing. I've, a, and I've, I've seen away. salvage yards where they yeah. do that. It's, okay. To my understanding, there's no proposal for a crusher or whatever those things, the real name for those things are. It's just for storage. Crusher, but, I like that one. Yeah, crusher. why not? Crusher. That's what Self explanatory. It, it crushes them. It's a crusher. Um, I know. But yeah, it's, it's something to think about. So. I was a professional wrestler, but that's, that's what I'd want for my nickname. Crusher. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, there being any further questions for uh, Mr. Cochran. All right, thank you, Lynn. Yes, sure, uh, thanks. Could we, if Mr., is Mr. Bradford here? No, they did not attend tonight. I 
I know they've definitely planned to attend the Board of Commissioners hearing. Um, I thought they had planned on being here tonight. <laughs> Uh, then without the applicant here, we'll hear from the people who have signed up to uh, speak on this case, and it looks like the first name on the uh, roster is Mr. David Brooks. For the record, please state your name and address. Uh, my name is David Brooks. My address is 110 Ridge Crest Drive, Stoneville, North Carolina. Okay, sir, and what is it that you'd like the planning board to know? Uh, so my wife and I own the property directly across the street on the north side of 770 in Whispering Pines. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the topography of the area, but it's kind of like uh, a hilly area. So this property is on a hill um, right across the street from us. Our property is also located on a hill, so we have a, a direct view into the property. Um, so our, our concerns is with this uh, conditional zoning um, what's to stop the applicant from putting whatever there once they get their zoning in place um, you know we we don't see this as something that will enhance the property value in our area it's essentially residential and, and we are aware of the muffler shop down the down the road east of us going to oh, it's, it's a muffler shop that's done oh okay um, you know, with a auto salvage business, that's a 24-hour day operation. They could be in and out of there with uh, uh, diesel trucks day and night, uh, going to get wrecks, bringing wrecks back to the yard, setting up storage, handling them, beating them, banging on stuff. Um, I think all the residents in the area would uh, not appreciate having to put up with that on a daily basis. Um, traffic's already a concern there. Um, that stretch of 770, uh, a lot of people, when they're stuck behind somebody slow coming out of Eden or Stoneville, that's a prime passing area. There's been a number of accidents there. Um, you know, when people go in and out of our neighborhood, um, you know, we've had a number of close calls and, and there have been a number of wrecks at that intersection of Ridgecrest and 770. So we think that's a, a safety concern. Um, the... the didn't they just lower the speed limit on that section of the road to 45 miles an hour? No. 55. Um, right after you get um, west of of the Har well, yeah, where Harrington Highway crosses there at Shady Grove Road, it turns into 55, and it's 55 until it gets to the uh, outer limits of Stoneville. So, um, you know, with the potential loss to property values with this going on, the nuisance of it being uh, a 24-hour day operation, um, we're, we're requesting the board uh, disapprove this request. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Brooks? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm having a little trouble reading the handwriting on this next one. Is it... F A I G S Vegas. Fargus. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, please come forward. You're next on the roster. For the record, please state your name and address. Um, I'm Dorothy Fargus from 122 Ridgecrest Drive. Um, and I too, and I'm right on the other side of him. And right the across the street. Across the street. And. I know he's talking about there's a berm and whatnot, maybe down at the bottom where 770 is, but we have a housing development that that hill right there, we kind of set up higher than they do, and we can see in there, I mean, even kind of above some of the trees that's there, but it's not too bad like what it's there now, but I hate to think how it could be. But I mean, we can see that from our kitchen window, our front porch, our front yard, our driveway. I took pictures today, which I, mean, I can't really like show you, but it's like, cause it's a big hill, you know, and you can just look right over there and you'd have to build a tremendous fence or something. I mean, it would, and that is the only way in and out of Whispering Pines. And it's like we're trying to be a nice neighborhood. We have some restrictions in there. We can't have chickens or cows or have a trailer pull in their backyard or certain things like that. But I wanted to mention that, like the view is like 
bad, it would be bad for us. Property values would go down, and I know the noise, and I know you can hear the noise, because it used to be the Good Time Express right there, and then after that, it was the 11 Unlimited back in 1978. That's how long we've had that house. And, and somebody would just be hollering, hey, Joe, and you could hear it over there, because, like, here's them, here's us, and then there's 770, but it's like, it's like right there, you, if you can kind of catch my drift, you know, and it's like the noise, I couldn't imagine metal, you know, like, you know, banging and hollering and stuff like that day or night. And um, I also want, I did want to ask about the rezoning, if it's rezoned for this, say, then that then people purchase it, they buy it, they put this here. What about like, say, a year or two years, they go out of business, is it permanently rezoned? for industrial, or does it go back to residential? How does that work? It would be zone light industrial. So it would be... What, what the applicant is asking us to do is to change the zoning map. Yeah, Brooks is there, yeah. It's a map amendment that we're, we're voting on. That's how zoning takes place. We change the zoning classification of the property on the map. Okay, so then it's kind of permanent till somebody Un requests. Until somebody comes forward and wants to... Uh, okay. We call it okay. down zoning. All right, they well, I just want wanted to let y'all know, though, that there is a nice housing development there, and that is our only way in or out. Somebody comes up there and looks at a house, and they like it, they want to buy it. When then they come down the hill, all they're going to see is that. And there's no other way out of there. <laughs> That's it. It's right there. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Steve Baker. And for the record, would you please state your name and address? Yes, sir. My name's Steve Baker, 6750 NC770 Stoneville. Okay. What is it that you'd like the planning board to know? My property is right beside of this. I just bought my property a year and a half ago. Uh, there's 26 acre farm, and I bought, uh, my friend was, he was on his last days, and so he asked me to buy his, he gave me a deal and sold me his property so I could look after the farm. <clears throat> there's nothing but a well there. Um, um, I actually have plans to come and get my zoning changed to residential. It's always been some sort of a business in this building that I bought, it's 5,000 square foot, uh, but I, my plans were to change it into a, a nice home one day, because it's like right at four acres. And I thought, wow, this would be nice. Live up here on my buddy's farm that, that's been there 80, he, his family had it 85 years. But my concern is I've been into cars all my life. I was a junkyard dog. I lived in junkyards. <laughs> I, 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 I play around with the 30s hot rods now, and I, I build some of those. But uh, I know you can ride into Eden, and you can go on Monroe Street. It's a disaster. You can ride to the traffic circle. It's a disaster. Um, a junkyard, I remember growing up in Clarence Hale's junkyard that started out as a towing business. It started out as a garage. And now it is from one inch of the property to the other inch to the property to north to west, it's cars stacked on top of each other. I'm old enough to realize that if this is approved, there's no one on the board that will ever monitor this. It's just not gonna be monitored, it's gonna be a free for all, and I know that. Um, the last thing I want to do is to start off on a negative note with my neighbor. But I don't have a choice. I mean, if he was here tonight, I'd shake his hand and say, can we work this out? But uh, I, I, I don't want to spoil his dreams, but therefore I don't want my, my dreams spoiled as well. And so uh, we are concerned because we are, there's, there's three pieces of property on this, 40, on this 26 acres. We're all on adjoining well. Uh, I just put a new well pump in three weeks ago. Uh, it's been it's been there for uh, 80 years. The well has it's worked great. Uh, I have walked through the woods. I have I've uh, I've spent a lot of time uh, looking to see how far is this little creek from this property because because in 
being a junkyard dog, you have to step over the grease and the oil and the transmission fluid and the antifreeze. You have to. Uh, and I'm just concerned that our well, our only source of water, is going to get disturbed. It may not get disturbed in 30 days or 60 days. It may not get disturbed in five years. But uh, I know that this kind of business would, would total the, the value of our property and the value across the street. It just will. I'm just trying to be real here, that's all. And uh, um, I know Lynn says that, that, he's a, that he is for it. Uh, but uh, you, I've talked to some people across the street in, in uh, Richmond Pines, and you know a lot of people don't want to come forward. They don't want. They don't want to be known as. Uh, I don't want to start no trouble. But and I don't want to. And I want to have a good neighbor next door. But but I'm concerned. And 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 we talked. To, I talked to Lynn about a buffer over the phone. Uh, what is a buffer? It, 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 what is a fence? Uh, is it going to be? Could it be a a four foot fence could it be a six foot fence is it wood is it metal what's the fence what's a wood fence going to look like in three years could it be laying over falling over you see what i'm saying it's it's, it's it could be beautiful for the, for the first couple of years but after that what's it going to look like then what's it going to be like to have pit bull dogs or dobermans or or even a nice collie running around barking and, and I don't know I just don't I, I would hate I hate to spoil his dreams but I hate to spoil mine as well so you know I just wanted to come over here and, and share that much with you uh, because we only have a well now he did bring up Dan River water running water I've done that homework there is a there is a meter right in front of this proposed piece of property <clears throat> so my thinking is this proposed piece of property is on Dan River already or there would not be a meter right in front of it on, on the road. I have tried to get Dan River water, and it's sad that I've got to go to this person that's going to buy this property and, and, and ask him for a, uh, a pass to run my water line through his property. Going up against him uh, ain't going to get me a water. So, so I've talked to city plumbing about running that eight inch main down to my property and it's 20 grand. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's just a battle all the way around uh, that it's sad that it's turned out like this because I was hoping for a neighbor that we could get along great and, and he'd give me a pass to run water, an easement to run water to, to these businesses next, I mean, to the properties next door. Now, the, 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 exhaust center that's right across the driveway from me that's on the 26 acres. Tim opened that up as an exhaust center, and then it didn't make it too well. So Tim works for the city of Eden now, and he might do one or two, three exhausts a month. It's not, I mean, he's going to take his sign down because he, he, he couldn't make it. And so, so uh, um, and like I said, I, my, I will probably be here in the next couple of months asking to get my land uh, rezone for residential and so any questions for mr baker just one uh are chair you, recognizes james fink are you between the applicant and the exhaust shop that's your property in between those two i am right between yes yes and i'm i'm uh, right next door to this piece of property gotcha. okay thank you sir thank you sir <clears throat> i do have uh a question for uh, Mr. Brooks: uh, Are you? Is your community served by Dan River Water? Yes. Sir. Okay, so it comes off of a feed on 770. Yes, sir. It, it comes right now on 770, and we're on Dan River Water. And I don't, I don't know if the uh, development just to the west of us, but uh, off of. Uh, yeah, we have it. Y'all are on. Okay, so they're on Dan River Water also. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the last person to sign up for this case is Mr. Richard Lloyd. And Mr. Lloyd, if you would, for the record, please state your name and address. Richard Lloyd, 177 Laurel Bluff Road, Stoneville. And what is it that you'd like the planning board to know? Okay. I grew up in the automotive business. Um, I know this business very well. For one, environmental. 
a junkyard requires a liner put underneath, uh, according to the EPA. We're talking a half million dollar liner at least, and even that does not stop the runoff. I happen to be down the street about five, six hundred feet, and that creek runs 315 feet along my property on 770. Trust me, we will have runoff. Um, they are up on a hill, I'm down the hill, and the water will run right down into the creek. Um, it'll bring rodents, lots of them. You'll have trucks going in and out, doing damage to the roads. That's more road upkeep. Uh, the noise, there's gonna be a lot of noise from it. We have a very quiet neighborhood. neighborhood. Um, the smells from it, people torching things, stuff like that, fire danger. There's all sorts of things that go along with this business. And it's a real detriment to where we live. Are there any questions for Mr. Lloyd? Okay, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Any discussion about this amongst your members? Do we do we have any information? I mean, everybody said the property values are going to go down. Do we have any evidence? No. Un un Unfortunately, we're not permitted to uh, consider opinion evidence unless it's backed up by a traffic study from DOT or something like that. It's just the way it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, however, we uh, we are allowed to consider your concerns, uh, other concerns that you've mentioned. I'll state the obvious. I'm, I'm perplexed on why the applicant's not here. <laughs> I mean, I, I would think that if you have a, an interest in redoing something that you'd want to stand up and tell us why it's so great and we don't have the opportunity to ask that question tonight. Mm -hmm. I would point out, too, that this piece of property, I'm pretty familiar with it. It, it drains off significantly on three sides of it pretty close. It's, it does. It does. It's got a lot of fall to it um, going toward that creek. It does. Um, well, being a member myself of the TRC, <clears throat> uh, for those of you in the audience who doesn't know what the TRC is, it's an acronym for the Technical Review Committee. And it's a committee of about, what, Lynn, 14 members? And uh, representatives on that uh, committee are there from uh, the planning board, uh, which is yours truly, <clears throat> our uh, community development director, uh, county engineer, uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation, who uh, oversee all the driveway permits and that kind of thing, uh, fire marshal's office, uh, I, I can't off the top of my head recall all the different agencies, the North Carolina D D Division of Environmental Quality, uh, school school uh, uh, board, our school uh, uh, district is a member. Uh, so for some of these larger developments, we have to consider things like the necessity possibly to build a school to accommodate big developments and so on and so forth. And this committee is tasked with uh, reviewing site plans that are submitted to make sure that they meet all the required uh, criteria, both statutory and uh, uh, requirements from our own unified development ordinance in the county to make sure that um, they're not causing damage to anybody. Um, I was not aware that 770 is so low compared to the elevation of Ridgecrest Drive and the property that's being asked to be rezoned. And I kind of have a visualization um, of, of what you can see over the top of the trees. I mean, that makes sense to me. And 
Are there, uh, are there any motions? I'd like to make a statement, if you don't mind, before oh, you have a motion. Chair recognizes Cindy Hayward. Um, I, too, am perplexed why the applicant is not here and uh, that the community, there's representatives from the community that are here, and we're here for both. We're here to make a, a decision that um, hopefully helps the applicant, but also uh, takes into consideration what the neighbors and the communities around any structure will see. And I actually drove out to this property, and I do know how it's it's up and down. And what yeah. in looking at these these properties, and and of course you want new businesses, but my thinking is that it has to congeal with the neighborhood, and it has to be a subsidiary service that. Uh, the neighborhood would use uh, on a on a frequent basis, and um, you also have to think, like the like Miss Vargas said, what's the worst thing that could be here in the list of things that have been conditioned, and what would it look like to the people that are around this? And uh, I know there's requirements. Um, in any construction on buffers and and screenings, but buffers and screenings, especially if they're foliage, they're different from season to season. And what you might not can see in the in the summer, you see all winter. So I try to take all of those things in into into consideration. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the the people have to live there every day. The owner can walk away from that business at night and go to some place where it's not there. So I, I, my main concern is that the applicant's not here, and the other concern is is what effect that this could have on the on the community. Um, and I appreciate you you coming out tonight to let us know your concerns. Mr. Chair, I'm ready to make a motion. Chair recognizes Mr. James Fink. After considering the Rockingham County adopted comprehensive plan for Rockingham County Planning Board recommends denial of case 2022-01. This rezoning is not consistent with the adopted Rockingham County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. This zoning amendment is not supported by the intent and descriptions of the G1 land class. The board considers its actions in denying the proposed zoning amendment to be reasonable because the size of the parcel is not appropriate for light industrial uh, conditional district. The proposed uses allowed in the district are not appropriate for the land considering its effect upon the landowners, the neighbors, and the community. And the property for the request of bunch of properties that are currently zoned residential agricultural, residential and protected. Uh, nearby parcels are zoned for a mix of residential agricultural, commercial, and industrial uses. And the light industrial conditional district rezoning is discordant with the, re the zoning characteristics of the area. On balance, the following factors. Uh, one, the size of the tract in question. Two, the compatibility of the zoning action with the comprehensive plan. Three, the benefits and detriments resulting from the zoning action for the owner of the newly permitted property, the neighbors and surrounding community, and four, the relationship between the envisioned permitted uses and the uses currently present in adjacent tracts weigh against approving the proposed zoning amendment. Second. A motion is made and seconded to deny this application, 2022-01. All those in favor of the motion to deny, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like sign. The, uh, there is no opposition, so the decision of the planning board is unanimous to deny this application at this time. Um, and let me remind you one more time that the applicant has the uh, prerogative of appealing this case now to the county commissioners who have the final say. And if you uh, <clears throat> would like to attend that meeting to uh, continue to raise your objections, you're welcome to do so. It's a public meeting. Thank you very much. I believe he said March 21st. It's, it'll be March 21st. That's the, the, the Board of Commissioners hear these public hearings at their second in this meeting. Room, in this room, 6.30 right p.m. We'll send out another notice regardless. So uh, if that date or time does change, you'll get another notice of when it will apply. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for your 
at all, and, and not just because you turned it down. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to, to ride out and look at the property. That means a lot. Thank you. Uh, staff will please present our next case, Zoning Map Amendment Request 2020-2022-02. Got too many twos in there. Right. Twenty-two. Wait till we get to twenty-twenty-two dash twenty-two, because it's going to. Now you're really trying to confuse me. <laughs> Cases twenty twenty-two and dash o two and dash o three are essentially identical to each other. They're in different areas of the county, and I'm sorry that NT sixty-five was a typo, it's NC-687. It was one of my famous copy-paste errors that you guys know about all too well. Um, again, look, I even put it in my slide, so there you go. Knowing for a fact <laughs> that this is over in Williamsburg, right <laughs> close to the edge of the county. Technically, I'm the one who made the slide. I copied and pasted the report, though. But the problem <laughs> originated with me. Moi. Uh, this request has been made by Ms. Mrs. Lori Robertson Johnson. Um, she owns the property located at 265 NC 87. Um, this is for a request for a straight rezoning from residential protected to residential agricultural, very similar to those that we have seen quite a few of recently. Um, is this one of those cases that... that falls in the uh, the trap of the This would actually RM. fall outside of the trap of the RMRA that we're going to fix. And I'll let um, Marcy's going to speak to that in a moment. This property is currently zoned RP, and so it wouldn't be in that RMRA class that we're getting ready to <coughs> fix with the text amendment. This is one of those that we're just going to have to look at on an individual basis since we're going to keep the RP zone, I think, was our last discussion to simply for single-family residential only and look at them on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but here is where the property sits, uh, right between Cherry Grove and NC 87, which it says clearly on the map and not 65. Um, everything around it, for a large part, is on residential agricultural. Um, though the zoning here, especially along 87, has an overlay of RP, there is quite a bit of manufactured housing out here when you look at the map, um, especially as you're headed southeast into Caswell County in this area. You'll also see across the street a small neighborhood commercially zoned property. Um, some years ago, I don't think any, maybe, Matt, you may have been on the board. This was 17 or 18. A lady came in and requested rezoning of this property. It was for an electronic gambling. Anyway, it did, didn't, didn't happen. But um, I think there may have been a little restaurant in there for a while. I, I, I have not been out there recently, but um, the request basically is for this property here to rezone from RP to RA. And since it is an existing lot of record, it doesn't have to meet current dimensional standards or density averaging as long as the property can be served somehow by water in, when I call water in, water out, um, then it's developable. This is just an aerial shot. This is a rural area of the county. Um, it's in the O2 land class. Um, it's kind of near the edge of a G1 land class. I'm not sure what that crossroads is over there, but it's a little bit closer to Reedsville. Um, and these are sort of the standard statements that we've come to know about the O2 land class and the county land plan, that it's characterized by low density residential development and agricultural uses, um, providing primarily for those uses. And the land use plan suggests that these areas should generally be zoned RA residential. Agricultural housing variety is targeted as a major goal of the land use plan. And though this is a non-conditional rezoning, the primary reason for the request on the applicant's part is access to a wider variety of housing options, as we've heard quite a bit about over the past yeah. six to eight months. 
just out of curiosity, where, where would the driveway be uh, uh, for this property, on 87 or on Cherry Grove Road? The property did have a structure on it at one point, I, I, I believe. Um, and I believe that there was a driveway off of 87. But technically, since she has access to both, she could probably pull it off of either one. And I don't have my GIS tools right in front of me, just oh, my I've PDF tools. Uh, we've got one here. Oh, good. Can you see a little better? Yeah. GIS, you okay. can just see a little bit better. It looks like it's uh, off of Cherry Grove. Does it? Okay. Okay. Then I got it backwards in my head. Okay. That wouldn't be the first time. <clears throat> but, yeah, that's essentially what this request is about. Um, and I'll leave that there. No, no special um, conditions, no special uh, issues with the topography or anything like that. It's pretty straight up from those that we've seen lately. But I'll be glad to answer any questions. County line, is it? Where's, where's the yeah, dot again? It's quite close to Caswell County line. The area of the map that sort of fades into whiteness, that's Caswell County. Um, let me see if I put in my staff report how far away it is from. Can you go back one? Yeah. Thank you, Jim, for pointing that out. It's about 1,200 feet yeah. west of the Caswell County line. East. I said east, but it meant west. Y'all know I have issues with east and west. I don't know what it is. I swear, I, I did go to school for geography, for actual geography. Well, yeah. we'll start you off slow. You can look at this. Maybe. You can look at this map and play that game called some Connect W's the and, Dot. Put some W's and E's on there for you. Goodness. 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 Anyway. Any questions for Mr. Carr? Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Uh, we do have a couple of speakers that have signed up. Mr. Al Simpson. I hope I got your right your name right, sir. It's F on for short if I call me Al. Okay. Yeah, F on for, for the record, could you state your name and address? Uh two sixty five uh eighty seven. Okay, and you're Mr. Al Simpson, right? F on Simpson, really. Oh, okay. And what is it that you'd like the planning board to know? I uh, I wanna put a, another trailer. I had a trailer there when I moved back here to tore it down. And uh, I talked to the guy down there, and he had to tell me I had to be rezoned to a marginal home. Now, uh, marginal home, what you consider as a new one or used one or what? Well, the, uh, we're, we're about to uh, change the zoning district later tonight. The, uh, Marcy, can you speak to this, please, the uh, RM district? Uh, yeah, we are going to uh, uh, do a text amendment or propose a text amendment for the RM district, but there is no RM in this particular vicinity. Um, but we would be allowing manufactured homes back in the RM district. So rezoning to RA or RM would be possibilities yeah. to put up manufactured homes. If it, 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 it up there. And I'll... It's been zoned when they first put it there, so many foot from the center line back, for in case of a new highway. I'm connected on both sides, Cherry Go and Rocket Now. I'm right next to Miss Robertson. Yeah. That's my lot right there. Yeah, this your, one right here. Your question is essentially about the fact that your parcel is zoned the same fashion as Mrs. Robertson's right now. Um, as in the RP district, like Mrs. Robertson, as it is, yours would only be suitable for modular or site built. That's probably the information that you may have gotten. If you would want to put a manufactured home out there, this is the process that kind of sort of has to be looked at for that to maybe happen. It would be changing the zoning nature of your neighboring parcel. Well, I was told downstairs I put three, 350 to get it rezoned, right? Mm -hmm. That's the application. Fee for the rezoning. We could sit down and have a meeting with you in the offices. He said he didn't see no reason why I couldn't go rezone. You know, that's what he told me now. Say. Well, that's what we're here to decide. We can make an appointment with you for that.
to have a discussion in our offices. Okay? Thank you. Brandon. For the record, could you please state your name and address? Lachey Brandon, 1300 uh, Tribute Drive in Raleigh, North Carolina. Planning board to know. Um, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of my mama. She is Lori Robertson Johnson. Mm -hmm. And I'm just here to support for her to get um, our land rezoned due to my mama homeless. And with us not having the funds for her to get her house on the land because it's been zoned, we can't afford like a modular home, but we can afford a double wide. So okay. like that's why I'm here to um, speak for my mom, help her out. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Brandon? Thank you very much. I will add to that information. Your mom had talked about that with me. She's been through it lately. Um, she had spent some nights in her car. She's, uh, she's been in a pretty rough spot. And this was the solution that we came up with. So I do think it's important a piece of information to include. She's in disability right now, so it's okay. only me you and are. her, you, had you know, head. trying to get stuff together at this moment. And it's just rough. Thank you very much. Uh, members, this is another one of those cases where uh, changing the zoning from residential protected to residential agricultural will just open a different kind of opportunity for affordable housing for the applicant, and I see no reason why we should improve it. Any discussion? Okay, then we'll uh, need a motion to do that. I'll do, I'll do a motion. Uh, chair recognizes Mr. Corey Scott. After considering Rockingham County adopted comprehensive plans, the Rockingham County Planning Board recommends approval of case 2022-02 this action is consistent with the adopted Rockingham County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. This zoning amendment is supported by the intent and descriptions of the O2 land class. The permitted use in the residential agricultural district is, are compatible with the character of the existing developments on adjacent parcels and in the neighborhood. And the proposed rezoning conforms to the guidelines, goals, and requirements of the Rockingham County Comprehensive Land Use Plan O-2 land class and the future use map. The board considers its action in adopting the proposed zoning amendment to be reasonable because A, the size of the parcel is appropriate for the residential agricultural district. B, the proposed uses allowed in the district are appropriate for the land considering its effect upon the landowners, neighbors, and community. C, the property for the request of Butts properties that are currently zoned residential, agricultural, and residential protected. Nearby parcels are zoned for a mix of residential, agricultural, commercial, institutional, and industrial uses. The residential agricultural rezoning is not discordant with the zoning characteristics of the area. On balance, the following factors, one, the size of the tract in question, two, the compatibility of the zoning action with the comprehensive plan. Three, the benefit and detriments resulting from the zoning action for the owner of the newly permitted property, the neighbors and surrounding community. And four, the relationship between the envisioned permitted uses and the uses currently present in adjacent tracts weigh in favor of approving the proposed zoning amendment. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the application for uh, rezoning for case number 2022-02. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like sign. Since there's no opposition, the planning board uh, approves the uh, application for rezoning. Uh, now, folks, you're, you'll have to, uh, you don't have to, but you may uh, attend the commissioner's meeting on March 21st along with the other case, and the final approval on our recommendation that the property be rezoned will be uh, voted on by the commissioners. 
you'll also get another notice in the mail like you did this time. I was just saying you should, everyone will get another notice in the mail before it comes time before the commissioner's hearing. Yeah. You're very welcome. Have a good evening. And now staff will present our last case, uh, zoning map amendment, case number 2022-03. I have 2202. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, am I old. <laughs> Last week, all right. <laughs> the typos are abounding. <laughs> Helps on the way, Marzi. There, the, there will be less in the future. There's less than there used to be. This property is surrounded by RAs. Yeah, this one's even more straightforward. Yeah. Um, than that one. Well, let's um, go. Yeah, pretty much everything around this. <laughs> by um, Mrs. Ramona Jesse. Actually, the same day that Mrs. Robertson came and named in my office, they were like boom, boom, the same afternoon. I was like, what's going on? Uh, tax pin. Eight nine two three zero zero nine six nine eight eight eight. It's on uh, six forty nine Massey Road in Williamsburg. Also, um, sort of out the way of that one, but not as far out. It's essentially a little bit less than halfway between Reedsville and the Caswell County line. Sort of headed due east, out Massey Road, which is a state road, but just a short little stub road there. This is an odd little pocket of RP zoning. Um, if the purple stripes weren't there, you would see that that's just a yellow box, just like the other yellow box above it and the other yellow box above it. So why these areas of frontage on these lots was chosen for zoning for RP and not the entire lot, or if that's a map slip error, or what the previous zoning history was is not terribly clear to me. It does look like it was pretty clear that the entire lot of the one across from Scott Road was to be zoned RP at some point, probably back in the late 80s when all of these districts were laid out. But this one's a little, confounds me a little bit, but it's surrounded essentially by residential agricultural. Mrs. Jesse has re uh, requested rezoning from residential protected to residential agricultural. Um, for the same allowances and options for housing. Um, there's nothing really standing in the way of that. Uh, according to the land use plan, oh, I'll just show you the aerials right quick. Um, it's just a mostly rural and very um, lightly populated exurban area. The land use plan, she's also in the O2 yeah, land use class, which strongly supports RA zoning, uh, very low density residential uses and agricultural uses. This area is served by individual well and septic. I believe some components of that may already be present on the parcel. I'm not 100% positive, but I believe they may be in the discussion that I had with the applicant. Again, here are our points from the land use plan that are related to these cases here that are coming up. O2 land class um, primarily provides for low density, single family residential uses. And we'd like to target housing variety as a major goal of the land use plan. And again, this is a situation where we've got that RPRA conflict with a history of some, the development history here is different than the development history I'm going to back up for you. Here, this is the map for the Robertson rezoning. And if you look, traveling from the corner of Cherry Grove in 87, running southeast, there's quite a few manufactured homes out there despite what the zoning says. Yeah. You see what I mean? This one's a little bit different in there that the housing density in the area 
is lower, but there is a bit more in the way of detached single family residential, although there are others, some other mixed types out there. Um, and it abuts essentially on three sides parcels that are zoned RA. So I'm glad to answer any questions. Yeah. Uh, Chair recognizes Corey Scott. Did you get any calls oh, or emails got, on this one? There, we got a few inquiry calls. I did get one or two calls with folks who were voicing concerns, but I'm just going to be completely honest. I'm not sh clear on what those exact concerns were. They didn't seem to pinpoint a specific problem or issue, and sound, and this is purely conjecture, sounded like it may be a neighbor slash family sort of dynamic going on that's sort of getting pulled into this resulting request. That's just my summation of what it may have sounded like to me. And certainly not saying this is what's happening, but um, but we didn't get any um, expressing concerns about manufactured homes going in the area specifically or anything like that, no. Is it the, the driveway? Because where that property is at, there's a couple of nice homes actually built around. There's one with a pool there and are. stuff like that. And so I'm, I'm, I was just curious to see if you know. Yeah. And when you look at it, that's why. Yeah, when you look at a map like this, it's a fair question to bring up, and that's why I pointed that out. But since no specific. None them, since none of those neighbors are in the <laughs> sitting here, I guess that they, their concerns were not significant. Yeah, I have not heard from anyone specifically saying, I'd rather not have a mobile home there or um, anything like that. Okay. Any other questions for Lynn? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, this sounds, uh, uh, members, like a uh, type of request we've had many of in the past uh, so that the applicant can... <clears throat> take advantage of a um, uh, housing opportunity that's a little more financially beneficial to them. Any uh, discussion? In that case, we'll uh, consider a motion. I'll make a motion. Chair recognizes Cindy Hayworth. After considering Rockingham County adopted comprehensive plan Plans, the Rockingham County Planning Board recommends approval of case 202203. This action is consistent with the adopted Rockingham County Comprehensive Land Use Plan. The zoning amendment is supported by the intent and descriptions of the 02 land class. The permitted uses in the residential agricultural district are compatible with the character of existing developments on adjacent parcels and in the neighborhood, and the proposed rezoning conforms to the guidelines, goals, and requirements of the Rockingham County Comprehensive Land Use Plan, O2 Land Class, and Future Land Use Map. The board considers its action in adopting the proposed zoning amendment to be reasonable because A, the size of the parcel is appropriate for the residential agricultural class district. B, the proposed uses allowed in the district are appropriate for the land considering its effect upon the landowners, neighbors, and community. And C, the property for the request abuts properties that are currently zoned residential agricultural and residential protected. Nearby parcels are zoned for a mix of residential agricultural, commercial, institutional, and industrial uses. The residential agricultural zoning is not discordant with the zoning characteristics of the area. On balance, the following factors. One, the size of the track in question, two, the compatibility of the zoning action with the comprehensive plan, three, the benefits and detriments resulting from the zoning action for the owner of the newly permitted property, the neighbors and the surrounding community, and four, the relationship between the envisioned permitted uses and the uses currently present in adjacent tracks weigh in favor of approving the proposed zoning amendment. Made and seconded to approve the application for case number 2022-03. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like sign. Since there's no opposition, the vote is unanimous and the uh, zoning request is approved. Uh, who was the second? 
Stop that with you. Okay. I just want to make sure. Thanks. Okay. The next item on our agenda is uh, to consider a text amendment to the Unified Development Ordinance, which Marzi's going to explain to us. All right. And uh, uh, let me just say that uh, this recommendation comes after a meeting of the, uh, you recall at the previous meeting, I requested that we uh, reinstate or, or reconvene the uh, UDO Advisory Committee to consider this uh, change to the UDO before it came to the Planning Board. So what you're going to hear is what uh, is, is a summation of that meeting. Mr. Marziano, you have the floor. Uh, as, as my thunder's been stolen, as was previously <laughs> mentioned, um, now, as, as I brought up at the last meeting, you know, we, we've had a lot of this problem since the UDO got um, amended back in August that RM removed manufactured housing. Um, th that is consistent with the land use plan uh, that was adopted back in May. However, in my opinion, it wasn't the right time to have made that change. There was no forethought. There was no public outreach. There was... Um, there, just, there just wasn't any planning involved in the plan. Uh, we did meet with the UDO Advisory Committee. We laid out several options for them, you know, change it back, roll the clock back, um, amend the back to where we allow uh, manufactured housing in the RM district, um, go forward with what the land use plan called for and try to rezone all the properties that had <laughs> manufactured housing on them from RM, uh, which would be a long and arduous task, um, or just do nothing. Um, we, we roundtabled it. We talked about possibly also including RP or not. Um, but ultimately, we decided with this option just to kind of roll back the clock, go back to the way it was before, make it a little bit more fair for everybody. Um, the intent for the committee and the changes was not to make a hardship upon the people. Um, so with their suggestion and our recommendation, we are uh, requesting that y'all recommend to the Board of Commissioners to put back into the RM district uh, Class AA manufactured housing dwellings and Class A manufactured housing dwellings um, to be listed as permitted by right with developmental standards. The same developmental standards that would apply to RA as well. Um, and pointing out that should this recommendation be approved, it would automatically uh, amend the land use plan with the removal of that policy, which isn't to say that it couldn't be put back into place in the future. Once more thought has been put into how to actually implement a change of that nature. <clears throat> uh, let the members know that if we don't go along with this text amendment, what's going to happen is we had two cases tonight where rezoning from residential protected to residential agriculture was requested solely for the purpose of uh, having an opportunity to um, for applicants to uh, purchase and install manufactured housing on their property, where without this text amendment, uh, we're going to have to hear every single one of those cases. We'll have to continue doing that. So that's number one. And number, if, number if I, two. If I may real quick to echo that a little bit, I've got 11 people lined up wanting to do rezonings if this doesn't pass. So, <laughs> I mean, it's... Same. So uh, my recommendation uh, when the UDO com Advisory Committee met was that we uh, go with uh, these text amendments. And uh, it was pretty much agreed to unanimously at the meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm asking you to uh, consider approving these text amendment changes. Can I ask a, a question? Yes, Corey, Scott, please. Uh, so the ones that we talked about tonight were increased housing options and related to RP. So how come RP is not included in this discussion? RP doesn't permit manufactured housing. The, the previous version of RP only permitted it under special uses. Um, we did feel that, and in my personal take on things anyway, is less special uses, the better. 
um, the, the intent of the RP district was to set aside a single family detached residential district. Um, we felt to keep it in that character that yes, while we had a few cases tonight that were RP related, the majority that we see coming for us are RM and the, the bigger, the bigger hurdle to make, meet our land use plan was that we have subdivisions completely made of manufactured housing that are RM. We don't have that in the RP district. The RP district manufactured housing is very selectively based um, or was pre-existing to the zoning at the time. And while, yes, tonight we had a few of those cases, those aren't the norm for our requests. Well, I mean, the last meeting we had a couple, too, that were RP. Yeah, RP. And, and it's going to continue. It's probably going to continue as well. It's, gonna, it's not just going to continue, it's going to grow because that's the only other alternative these people have other than a... Uh, a modular home or stick built home and uh, but I'm, the, the I'm just gonna I'm just gonna admit that uh, you know when we did the UDO uh, perhaps a terrible mistake was made in not uh, allowing for the opportunity uh, for people to purchase uh, manufactured double wide homes and so not only are we in a sense discriminating against those people, but we're discriminating against the companies that build these things. I mean, it was all unintentional, yeah. but uh, th that's the net effect of what happened. And I'd like to point out also real quick, um, the, the major goal for us to do this was not to hinder people who already rezoned and who had land specifically for manufactured housing. In the RP district where there is existing manufactured housing, those are special use cases and we'll always be able to have that manufactured housing. Um, the intent wasn't to alter our districts. Um, in that case, if, for instance, if we, you can make a recommendation if you want to add in RP in some measure, but it was a special use permit prior. Um, for it to be a special use permit again with the same regulations, it doesn't make any sense not to make it permitted by right, but making it permitted by right dissolves the line between RP and RM. And it, you know, basically, we don't. We'd have a zoning classification that doesn't meet the needs of that zoning classification. Um, it's just, it's probably not fair, but it's just the way it was all designed. Um, but that's up to y'all's discretion. Our recommendation solely is for the RM district. Any other questions for Marzi? Thank you. Uh, I move that we go ahead and approve these text amendments to the uh, Unified Development Ordinance. I, I made Justin handy dandy uh, yeah, pre pre motions. So. Oh, He's how there. nice. Not here. I like when you do that. And they're shorter. <laughs> they're a lot shorter than my consistency statement. Okay. Point to my copy. Oh, yeah. oh. No, no, I was just showing him where it was. Oh. oh. Yeah. Uh, I move that the planning board recommend to the Rockingham County Board of Commissioners approval of the text amendment to allow manufactured homes in the residential mixed zoning district as this amendment is in line with the county's goals toward affordable housing and finds that it is in the best interest of the public's health, safety, and general welfare. Further, the planning board finds that this amendment is not consistent with the land use plan. All over, or we, do we have a second? Second. A ma motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, text amendments to allow manufactured homes in the residential mixed zoning district. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like sign. With no opposition, the vote is unanimous to recommend that the county commissioners approve the text amendment. The next item on the agenda is a further fine tuning of our bylaws, um, which became necessary uh, based on some changes that the county commissioners have um, made. And if you look at section two, powers and duties, <coughs> Notice in section uh, number one and section two is just language change. 
Uh, in section three under membership turns and vacancies in the blueprint, you'll notice it says, a majority of board members, four or more, shall have an established residency in Rockingham County for a period of at least five years. This is a change that commissioners uh, would like us to make. And it doesn't affect the current board, it's going forward. So if we don't have four members at the current time who have uh, a residency period in the county of at least five years going forward, that'll be one of the requirements for people seeking appointment to the board. What is the reason for that? Well, the, the uh, commissioners responded to public input and uh, uh, people in the, in the citizens from Rockingham County were concerned that uh, in order for uh, the planning board to be more closely uh, attached to what's going on in the county, it would be better if they had some history or some longevity in the county for that to, to uh, take place, so. I think they didn't want the upstarts from moving in from Guilford County. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on those people, those, those interlopers from Guilford County. <laughs> yeah, so sorry. <laughs> uh, on the next page, uh, we've restructured the language a little bit. I did that. Recusal from voting, and alternate members may be appointed as seated members sooner if vacancies among board memberships occur. So if, for example, uh, somebody resigns from the board, we can make an appointment quicker to, to uh, someone. Uh, all members appointed to the planning board shall swear an oath of office. We've all done that. Uh, The uh, without limitation for re-election on the uh, term of the chairman means that the chairman can be re-elected. Uh, what else? Do we, a lot of these changes you'll see, we're changing them from the planning board director to the community development director. That's the title, uh, new title of this office that Marcy holds. All right, under... Uh, We've changed the word bifurcated to dual meetings, make it a little easier to understand for people. Uh, board secretary, little <laughs> separate minutes. No, we put them all in one. Uh, we're changing the quorum from five members to four. Uh, there's been, since I've been chairman, there's been two instances where we couldn't even get a quorum to, to a meeting, one of which was regrettably, and embarrassingly, one of the biggest meetings uh, of, in the audience that I've ever seen here. We must have had 35 people here, and we could, didn't have a quorum, and I had to send everybody home. And people were here from Atlanta and Raleigh, and I mean, all over the place. And it was, uh, it, was not, it was not pleasant. Was that one of the ones last year? Yeah. Uh, We're going to start asking alternate members to attend the meetings. Currently, we have alternate members, but they're not really alternate members. Uh, they'll respond in a pinch if, you know, we call them, but technically they're not. We need some alternate members is what we need. And we want to be cautious about where these members come from, because right now, for example, there's three of us on the board from Eden, and we don't want to overload the board with members all from one community, because it, it I guess the accusation of bias could come in, or uh, we're not familiar with the outlying areas. It would be nice to be able to get some, uh, maybe somebody from Madison or, or uh, you know, Bethany, Township or something like that, you know, out that way where Coleybrook is. Uh, I know you live out that way. 
I'm in Stoneville. Stoneville, yeah. So. so you're you're packing the packing the board. Is that what it's called? Yeah, we don't want to do that. <laughs> don't want to do that. Uh, let's see what else we have three. here. Yeah. What? You are also in yes. court. Yeah, okay. Me and Julian Paul, that's what it is. Uh, the, the other changes on the next page uh, are really kind of language changes. Uh, again, the, the page after that, which is. Uh, parliamentary procedure reading down, you'll see several changes in blue. Uh, well, we, again, the quorum is restated and then uh, the title changes to community development director from planning director. And that's it. One thing I would point out is on the ne next last page. Next to the next last page, sorry. I should have numbered these. A about quorum. Taking the quorum down to four for majority vote cases. Yay. Everybody's for that. <clears throat> that will mean that for, no. So they're take it, that's, I'll take that back. So never mind on that one. Number two, it's been confirmed, and I talked to John Morris, to our attorney, and Paul looked at this too. We all wanted to make sure we all understood the law correctly, and this is what we have practiced at different points, and I think we were practicing, but we definitely have to practice it, that motions for the Board of Adjustments for a variance, only for a variance, you must have four-fifths of all seated members <coughs> present to cast a vote, and that's six. Yep. Yep. So that's just confirming that we need six for those cases. But everything else is a majority vote. Was that we cut the uh, end time of the meeting to 9.30 from yeah. 10 o'clock, but we're also changing to 6.30 start time. We've already approved that. So yeah. I'd uh, like to move that we uh, go ahead and make these uh, changes to uh, kind of clean up our uh, bylaws and to uh, change the quorum. Motion has been made and seconded to uh, ad ad adopt the changes to the Rockingham County Planning Board bylaws. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All opposed, like sign, there being no opposition, the changes to the bylaws are adopted. We have no new business, so we'll move on to old business. And the old business, I guess, is a review of the amended planning board um, bylaws. We just did that. Yeah, I know. So could we have a motion to adjourn? Don't all vote at once. <laughs> <laughs> motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you very much. And happy Valentine's Day to you all. Yeah.